I'm sorry for the delay in, should I say, transmission. <laughs> Go well for some Nigeria, Nigeria's network. All right, so I'll first like to appreciate um, the nurse himself, <laughs> nurse Anna Gese, for making this platform available for us. And uh, I'd also like to, you know, appreciate the guest speaker so far. You guys have been wonderful. I've been checking in every now and then, and I can say that <laughs> they've been dropping some very key things that even I had to make notes on. So thank you for pressure, uh, for precious, um, but Amy Dios, Sister Deborah, and the other persons. So what from what I could um, gather from their presentation so far, I could see some similarities in what I have prepared as well. And I think that should point to one thing. You know, when you have two or more persons talking about a particular topic and you can point to not one or two similarities, it would connote <laughs> your mind to action that you should actually try to um yeah go in that direction of what they are saying all right so let me start uh you know when i was praying for this and um the pressure asked me to you know he asked my opinion on what academic excellence is it got me thinking <laughs> you know i'm sure we all know that success is not is not a spontaneous effect it is um uh how do you say it? it's an after effect of something some preparations, some things that you have done, some antecedents of the fact itself. So, um, um, as I was saying, so when he asked my opinion about academic excellence, I, I had to think about it and what I could come to was that it is not a, a fact of fixation on maybe a particular thing that you're trying to do, but your ability to recognize the lessons that are embedded in your low moments. What are the low moments? Okay, you failed the course. What did you learn from that failure? I hope you can understand what I'm saying. What did you learn from how, uh, what are the things that you think you would have done differently? So, um, because there have been a lot of similarities, and so I'll just, you know, I like to consider myself an experiential um, teacher. So I would try to keep, um, everything that i'm going to be talking about here i'll try to keep some practical examples as well apart from the points the theory that i'll be giving i'll be giving some practical points as well so um i would like to state and read from my notes so please if you see me looking to this direction don't be scared i'm just trying to see my notes so i can keep uh, so i can you know Thank you for bro, precious for that. I can keep to notes and keep on track. So I wrote in my note that success is not final and failure is not fatal. Academic excellence is not the only requirement for a successful career, but it sure is a portal key. Good grades will get you very far in life. Very far, especially if you're the kind of person that you want to do something with academics. And even um it is known that in Nigeria, the narrative in Nigeria, even outside the country is, you okay, you, you've stated that you have, okay, you have a BS in computer science, you have a BS in nursing, you have a BS in, in um, engineering, but what did you come out with in your BSc? We all know that grades. All right, so I think I am back. But precious, please let me know if you can hear me. So, as I was saying, the the um, generic definition um, of academic excellence is the individual's ability to perform or excel in scholastic activities. So this definition in itself it automatically connotes subjectivity, if you ask me. Subjectivity in the sense that, okay, is academic excellence, what does it automatically mean? So that generic definition tells you that, okay, what, what it means, especially in our, in our, in our current geograph geographical um, location is your grades and your CGPA. But we all know that excellence is not only about academics. So what academic excellence really means, uh, it depends on the individual's 
perspective on the matter? Are you the kind of person that okay, grades matter to you, your CGPA? Is it grades that matter to you or your CGPA? There are two different things. With grades, you talk about the A's and the B's, and then the, 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 with the CGPA, you have the different classes. You, find, you agree with me that not all people who have been able to achieve academic excellence come out with first class. Why? Because there is a small margin from, um, there, there is a very, very small margin between what, what is called um, second class, upper, and first class. Okay, so it's it, your ability to achieve academic excellence alone. It means that you have to cultivate in yourself what is called the spirit of excellence. So how do you cultivate that spirit of excellence? Number one thing that I wrote in my notes here is striving best. Striving to produce the best of yourself. So by striving to produce the best of yourself, it also means that you will refuse to be mediocre in everything that you do. It means you push yourself. You push yourself. Okay, so as I was saying, to cultivate yourself in, in yourself, the spirit of excellence, you need to do three things. Number one is you need to refuse to be mediocre. You need to refuse. To produce the best in yourself, you need to refuse to be mediocre. You understand what I'm saying? Like in, in the way you do your assignments, in the way you you you, you comport yourself in, during uh, academic activities, in the way you you you, you do all, all things generally, right? So to cultivate your, yourself in um, the spirit of excellence, like I, I was saying, you need to also work with a goal. Without a goal, it's, it's, it's like a farmer. Let me just use the, the, the thing that is common to us, like a farmer going to the, um, the farm and you don't have a contract or something. It is your goal that is going to question your actions. Do you understand what, what I mean? When you set a goal, it's, it will guide your actions. It will give you direction. Okay, this is what I'm trying to achieve. How do I plan to achieve this? You've already, please, um, having a goal is not to say that you just put the goals in your mind. Have it in, write it down. I remember then when I was in school. Yeah. So what I used to do was, at the beginning of each semester, I had a, a, an exercise note. An exercise note that I wrote the, the grades that I wanted to, I wrote each course and I wrote the grades I wanted to achieve at the end of the semester. Mind you, this is someone that refused to check results. <laughs> We're going to get to that later. Okay, so you need to work with a goal. Another thing you need to do is reorientating yourself. So how do you reorientate yourself? And the way you comport yourself during examinations, and I don't mean when you are sitting in the exam all alone. It has to do with the events that are leading up to that examination. Are you are you reading enough? Are you over? Are you are you sensible to yourself? Are you over stressing yourself because of examination? You know, um, um, bro, bro. I think it was brought in there when he was talking, and he was saying something about reading. Ensuring he reads at least once daily. Are you the type of person that, that only reads maybe a few days to the examination? Of course, I'm not going to dispute the fact that you, you might not be able to read every day. Trust me, it's it's I don't know, it would take a special kind of grace for you to be read to be, to be able to read every day. Personally, I was not the type to read every day because how uh, a department was structured, you could be in class from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Sometimes you want to do other activities and a whole lot of things that would mitigate against you being able to read every day. But that doesn't mean that at least in a week, in a week, there are seven days in a week, three days in the out of the week, the baddest, that's the worst you could do. Three days out of the week, you should at least have something that you could say, okay, this is what I've read today, this is what I've done today. So examination competitions again, are comportment further. How do you read for an examination? How do you read 
in preparation for an examination? Are you the one that is easily intimidated by, oh, maybe you have a group of friends or maybe not even a group of friends and you're sitting amidst your classmates and this one is saying this, this one is saying this, and you're starting to question yourself, am I prepared enough for this? Please don't compare yourself. That brings me to another thing. Don't compare yourself to other people. Read at your own pace. Read at your own pace. Because I said I'm going to give you practical um, examples. So because um, some people are like, I understand there are some people here that are in uh, public universities that they are resuming and they're going to start exams soon. So how do you prepare? Out, out of the long days and months that you've been at home, how do you prepare to ace these examinations? Right? So one thing I used to do then that I found that really helped me was I used to read in reverse. How do I mean? You know, we have a timetable, yes. So the way I used to prepare for exams is I start from the last papers in reverse. Do you understand what I mean? Starting from the last paper, I read the last, the last paper, then the second to the last, like that. That was how I used to, because you understand that during the examinations, a lot of things will happen that will stress you. So I, I think I, I was able to test. I was able to test and do some retest as well. So I found that the, the, the best thing that worked for me was that if I read in reverse like that, so by the time you get in, all right, so sorry, once again, please. We'll just try to make it with, make do with what we can. So as I was saying, reading in reverse. So when you read in reverse and you read the last, the first paper, you let you allow the first you the first exam you're going to do be the last that you study for. But you find that by the time you're going through the days of your examination, you would have prepared for for, for the exams that are coming after. So you all the stresses. Oh, you've not read this, you've not done, you've already done that. So you wouldn't have to be running around. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So benchmarking yourself, set a standard. Set a standard for yourself. Set a goal, have daily goals. I don't mean just one goal and once you're done, you, you're done, uh, maybe you've been able to achieve that goal and you, you just stop. No, set daily goals, have daily goals, have monthly goals, yearly goals, what do you want to achieve? And have it in writing, not just in your mind. Because by the time you put it down and you're able to see it, you'll be able to judge your actions. For example, okay, NSC, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a nurse, so I'll be using <laughs> nursing, sorry. So maybe you have um, NSC, say, two, uh, 203 or something, and you've already written down in your notes that, okay, I want for this course, I want to have 80A, and so on and so forth. You'll be able to judge your actions that, okay, because I said I want to have A's in this, A's in this courses, the way I'm reading, if I was to grade myself, would I give myself A? And it even goes further to your examination when you are sitting down in the exam. So what I used to do then was, especially when it was during the exams or tests and everything, I would have that exercise notes by my bedside. So as I'm reading for each paper, I look at what I've written down that this is what I want to have for this exam in this course. And daily, I will check again that, okay, I, I, what I've done today, is it actually enough to get myself that great? Do you understand what I mean? So work with your goal. And once you've achieved, see, success is not, is not final. That you failed in a particular aspect or you failed a question doesn't mean that that is the end of it. What is the lesson that you've been able to to, to to learn. Assess yourself at the end of each exam. How did I answer these questions? How do I think I could have done better? Do you understand what I mean? Because at the end of it, especially if you're, you're doing the professional course, the exam is not the end of it. You have to practice those things that you've written down. Even if you do la cram la four, do you understand? You would have to practice those things that you've done. I hope you can hear me. I really hope you can hear me. Another thing that you have to do to cultivate 
a, a spirit of excellence is find your tribe. What do I mean by find your tribe? Find the people that challenge you to be the best. Find the people that challenge you to produce the best out of yourself. Like the um, speaker, um, Sister Deborah, that, that spoke yesterday, she said, if you're in a group that you, you're, you're not being challenged to, 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 be, uh, to be the best out of yourself, you need to leave that group. That does not mean that you, you ultimately, you know, say, okay, well, you guys are not good enough for me. No, 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 no. Please be humble. Find someone else that challenges you, but at the same time, keep your group. That will bring me to um, this um, ingredient, what I call the ingredients of um, excellence. So what are the ingredients of excellence? The first thing I would like to talk about is altruistic intelligence. Altruistic intelligence. So what do I mean by altruistic intelligence? We all know what altruism is. The altruism is the act of doing good. So, sorry, okay. So the act of doing good. How are you helping others? Are you helping others to be the best in themselves as well? So if you have a group like that, I hope you can hear me. If you have a group like that, that um, you, you found that, okay, these people, they, I, I, I've even found that there is no way in a group that you would, if you feel you're better than them, there is no way I don't know. There is no way that you will have it that you will not have someone that is better than you in one aspect. Oh, you are you good in this? Are you good in message? You are you good in maternal child life? You are going to have someone that is better than you in one particular aspect. You get what I mean? Please hold on. All right, so I think I am back. So I was saying, thank you, Brother Precious, for displaying that altruistic intelligence. Are you using, use your powers for good. Use your powers for good. Okay, everyone, everyone knows, everyone in your group knows that, oh, this person is good at this, this person is good at this, but you're holding the information. Why? The more you teach, the more you learn. The more you give to people, the more you get back to you. There is nothing, there is nothing in the book or whatever cherry that, that states that if you teach this person, your, your knowledge is reducing. No. The more you teach other persons, the more you have your ability to retain more information, the more your ability to, to learn new things. Because by the time you're teaching people, you're gaining new knowledge as yourself. Because when you're teaching them, they'll ask you questions. And I would think that if you don't know the answers to those questions, you would refer back to your books. And you're able to gain more knowledge. So altruistic intelligence. Another ingredient for academic excellence or excellence generally is discipline. Discipline, your ability to delay immediate gratification. Discipline yourself. You already have a goal that you, you want to achieve. And you understand that to achieve that goal is not going to come easy to you. You have to put in the work. So even when your body is not willing, of course, reading is not easy. It is not easy to sit and read. <laughs> some people have special graces, but some of us could have to, <laughs> by, either by nook or by crook, you have to study. So you need to discipline yourself. Okay, when it's time for me to read, I'll read. Don't rec see, recognize your excesses and deal with them. Add on. Those weaknesses that you've been able to identify, deal with them. Add on. Discipline yourself. How do you maintain discipline? It's consistency. That's another key in, in the ingredient. Consistency. Consistency and resilience. Let me 
take the two together. Consistency and resilience. It is not easy to be consistent. That is why you need to develop a, a skill of resiliency. Do you understand what I mean? It's, it's your, your ability to force yourself, your ability to say, okay, uh, when I'm done with class today, I, I will every day, okay, let's say at the end of every day, before I go to bed, I want to pick a particular chapter of my test book or um, some few pages of my notes. And that is what I want to do every day. And you're consistent, you, 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 you want to be consistent enough that you are doing that every day, every day. See, by the time you do it the first week, you do it the second week, it, there's going to be a mental shift. I don't know, no matter how stubborn or how lazy, honestly, how lazy you can be, there's going to be a mental shift. And it's going to keep reminding you, oh, this is what, I, what I've said. And that is why it is important for you to have a goal. One of my uh, persons that I, I like to listen to, one of my... Uh, um, the previous speaker of mine, Denzel Washington, he says something like, dream big. It is good to dream big, but dreams without action are like night fantasies. It is the action. You see, success is not, is not, is, is not spontaneous, like I said earlier. The magnitude of efforts, not just the grades, that is, is, is what defines the center, the core of excellence. The magnitude of effort. You find that when 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 you have certain people that are able to achieve a, a certain standard. Oh, sorry, Mister So So So, how were you able to achieve this thing? They'll tell you that. Well, I was able to discipline myself. I thought. Know yourself. Know yourself. Knowing yourself will help you to be sustainable. Are you a night reader or a day reader? Or are you an in-between reader? What do I mean? Are you the type that, okay, once it's, um, once it's daylight, once your brain sees daylight, it automatically means you cannot, cannot, you cannot put anything in your head. Or are you a night time? Are you a day reader that clock 8 p.m. straight to bed? So once you understand yourself and you are able to acclimatize yourself to yourself, you will know that certain certain things will not work for you. And that is how you'll be able to develop sustainability in what you're doing. Sustainability equals to consistency. For you to be consistent, you need to find sustainable methods. Sustainable methods to keep to what you're doing. Be sensible to yourself. See, one thing I've, I've, I've come to learn about myself is that, and I'm sure it's, it's common to everybody, there's that still small voice that, always tell, that will tell you that, oh, this thing that you're doing, you think it's sustainable. Listen. Listen to that to that voice. That voice is, is your innate ability. Oh yeah, we are going to class so, uh, and we are going to be gone for from it's eight, eight, 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. And your mind is telling you that uh, you want to read from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. You are who? So what's the point? You now get to class and you sit down. Other people are reading, and you're already done. you already you, you already do stuff. So who are you deceiving? Sorry to use that word. But you, who are you deceiving? But if you know yourself, you understand that no matter the amount of, okay, you want to feel among now. People are reading. You too, you want to say, okay, you want to read. But I'll tell you that if you've known yourself and you're able to find that, you want, you want um, okay, say you go to bed and once you wake up and you carry that book, within four hours, you would have achieved what would have taken you 12 hours if you had forced yourself. So be sustainable. This thing is not, it's not, it's, it's not a do or die affair. Yeah. It is not a do or die affair. 
I don't know. I don't want to sound. Um, it is not a do or die affair. Do you understand me? When others are doing a certain thing, it is not by force that you follow them to go and do that thing. Find your own, create your own niche. Do you understand what I mean? Create your own niche. There is nothing. See, we can come on here and we can talk and share our own experiences with you. And it will not go too far until you are able to sit down and actually talk to yourself and look in what will actually work. And it is through the experiences of other people, yes, that you're going to get. But you have to take that extra step forward. Nobody is going to spoon feed you. In fact, I, 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 I discourage it. Among the people that I mentor, I discourage it. I will show you the way, but I will not follow you to, to, through that way. It is something that is personal that you have to do for yourself. And that is what, uh, that is how you're going to get excellent. Another ingredient is motivation. Motivation. How do you get motivated? Do you motivate yourself or your, your, your source of motivation is external? Another ingredient for ex academic excellence, like I said, is motivation. Inspiration. How do you get your inspiration? How do you get your inspiration? Which will bring me to the type of learners. The type of learners. So the type A learner that I have here is one that enjoys the pleasures of life and is comfortable with being average. Nothing is wrong with this type. Like I said earlier, the definition of academic excellence is subjective, depending on what the individual holds their, what their priorities are. So the type A learner is, is, is the type of learner or a student that wants to go out, enjoy his or herself, and you know, whatever it is that, whatever efforts they can put into their work, they're able to do that. And if they achieve an um, average grade, they're fine with that. And it's a second type of learner is what I call the type B learner. This is the Frank Bookworm. The Frank Bookworm is maybe someone you would say, okay, this person is a bookworm. Um, I don't want to use the word SU book one, but if that will help us to understand. So the Frank book one is motivated by circumstances. It's motivated by circumstances around them. But the trick with this type of book one is that they tend to get too immersed in the circumstances that they are not able to see the bigger picture. The type, uh, the second, the third type, type of learner, rather, is the type B2, what I call the B2 bookworm. It's the playful kind of bookworm and is motivated by a goal, has a light approach to difficulties. The type B2 bookworm is the playful bookworm and is motivated by a goal. Can you see the difference between the type one, the B1 and the B2? One is motivated by circumstances and is not able to see the bigger picture, while the other is motivated by a goal. And the fourth type of learner, of course, there are different types. I've written different types here, but I'm only going to focus on this first four. Then the fourth type is the chaser. Everybody should strive to be the chaser. Yes, academic excellence is good, but what about your other abilities what about your other potentials you can write are you are you utilizing that gift you can do this are you utilizing it the chaser is one that is not strictly is not strictly focused on the grades the a's and the b's alone but it's also focused on developing the other activities because school is not eternal School is not eternal. Four years, five years, you're done. But once you're out there, your grades, your, your, your intellectual um, acuteness will only get you so far. Be the chaser. 
And I found that people that really achieve academic excellence are people that, that combine the chaser with another type. Either it's being the, the, the type B1 or B2 or even the type A. Do you understand? So let me go back to the, as I was saying, the ingredients of, of um, academic excellence. We've talked about this, we've talked about consistency, resilience, and tracing intelligence, self recognition The next thing that we need to talk about is holistic curiosity. Holistic curiosity. Ask those stupid questions. Don't take, if your lecturer is teaching you something, don't take it <laughs> one for a word of verbatim. Ask your questions. Be curious. Your curiosity will lead you to find out more. And that will take you a step further. That will take you from, curiosity will take you from a C student, from being a D student to a C student, from being a C student to a B student, and from being a B student to an A student. The people that really achieve something scholastically are not the ones that just you know, take their notes and that's all. They go further. They go further. Or really, holistic curiosity in the sense that, oh, you, you were told so, 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 and so in class. It might just be maybe you're working and you find something. I'm um, a kind of person that I, I like to immerse myself in nature. I would just, I would just be working and I discover a, a certain phenomenon. I go and search for videos about it and everything like that. So be, be curious. Then the next thing is because of time, I'd like to rush through these things so I can, you know. The next thing is intentionality. Be calculative. Another thing that is for intentionality is. Calculative commitment. Calculative commitment. The friends you keep, be intentional because either by one thing or another, you are a, a product of the people that you have around you. You are a product of the people you have around you. If you have a friend and you know this, this person has it say 80% of what you what, what, what you see. That you want in a person you cannot you cannot have pers someone that has 100 percent it is not possible so the the people that you have around you will either make or mark whatever you're, you're trying to achieve and i think the problem is a lot of us miss this once you miss once you miss the, the, the kind of friends that you're supposed to have around you, honestly, there is little. There is so little that you can do. Because your, the friends that you have around you keep you motivated in a way. It's time for you to read. You're feeling tired because you've been in class for hours. You probably have projects to do, assignments and everything. Your personal, um, your personal strength is saying, just stay in your cell and sleep. But your friend will come to you and say, oh, you know, we have to try. Even if it's two hours, let's go. But if it's someone that is, that, that, let's say a friend, I don't want to say lady. I say, okay, well, go and sleep now. Maybe tomorrow we can do something. And tomorrow we will come next tomorrow. Next week, tomorrow we will come the day after. So be calculative. Be intentional in your activities. What are you going to do? Have a to-do list. Honestly, it's not easy to follow daily, but have something. What is one, even if it's just one thing that you want to achieve for that day, have it. They will talk about setting goals and you know your your visions. The next thing I'm going to talk about, and the most important thing that I would say is positive affirmations. Positive affirmations. What do you say about yourself? Even the Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You say about yourself as a person. Are you the type of person that okay, you see that um oh this course is so so difficult and you know because people are saying that she when you feel by you people you you are saying it to yourself as well. And how do you develop? positive affirmation there is i don't know i don't want to i i, I don't want to 
say, sound too religious or anything, but trust me, there is nothing that you can do without God. To so achieve excellence, you cannot do it without God. To so achieve excellence, you must do your thing the God way. God, God, God he, will, he, he, will, he, he will correct you. He will teach you. He will direct you. That is, that is what makes a difference between an effectual reader, effective reader, and someone that is just reading. There's something that a friend of mine, I got through one of my friends that I used to say then when we were preparing for our professional exam and it was a very, very difficult period in, um, in school back then. There was um, some prayers, just some short prayers. And I'll tell you, till now, this thing is still part of my daily devotions. So the positive affirmation, the, the things, affirmations rather, that you say about yourself, Everything that comes out of your mouth concerning whatever you are doing should be positive. You might say, "Oh, it's not going to matter. It's not. It does not really matter, and um, it doesn't really say a lot." But trust me, it really does. Positive affirmation through prayer. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is to really achieve academic excellence. You need. You must experience the understanding of the different modes of learning. You know, when I was preparing for this, um, you know, bro, Pressure said something about the, how to read effectively. What about to me is that I think we need to imbibe a learning rather than a reading perspective. A learning rather than a reading perspective. The exams are going to be over, but what do you have to offer after the exams? The exams will be over, but what do you have to offer after the exam? Focus on learning. Focus on learning rather than reading. If your mind is set on learning, there is no way. You, 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 there are some questions. You find that there are some questions that they will ask you during the exam, and it's not even in your notebook. But because your your mind is set on learning and you're able to see, you're able, if your mind is set on learning, you'll be able to read between the lines. Do you understand what I mean? Between the lines. So focus on learning. That is how you'll be able to, to prepare yourself effectively for examinations. No, uh, um, although we've already said that examinations are not really the true test of intelligence, but evidently, <laughs> if you don't have the right attitude, if you don't write, have the right information towards an examination, it, it, it will become an Herculean tax without the appropriate antecedents. So what are those modes of learning? They are cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Cognitive has to, has to do with your intellectual capacity. Intellectual capacity. Feed your brain. Feed your brain. This only this does is, is not limited to say what you eat, good nutrition is good, but as well, read other books outside of the academics. Read other books outside of the academics. Be a leader. There's something I used to tell my people in school then that readers are leaders. There is no way you, you, you find some people that, you, there are some people that you just know that there's something different about them. Find out these people are people that, that have equipped themselves with knowledge. Equip themselves with knowledge. Feed your intellect. Your cognitive aspect must be up, up, up to par if you're trying to act. Then the other thing is affective. is the affective mode. Focus on building your mental health, a healthy mental health. Your mental health matters. This is Nigeria, and we don't really pay attention to mental health a lot. Although, um, previous time we've seen that there are some changes that are going on, but we we cannot overemphasize the need to have a good mental health to 
to exceed in life generally. You 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 um you find that sometimes you're preparing for an exam and you're you're feeling overly exhausted, overly you feel like you feel choked and it feels like the weight of the world is on your shoulders, so to, so to say. So what do you do? Think about things that that make you feel good. You get what I mean? Think about things that make you feel good. If it's to watch a movie, please watch a movie. Say you're reading, for example. It feels like your head is going to explode. Let me just use that word. Your head is going to explode. What do you think we're back now? Sorry for that. So I was saying cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. Please, because of time, please try to find out more on these three. If you're able to get these three modes of learning in order, I'm telling you, you're, you're going to, your, your life is going to be easy. It's, it's going to be very, very easy. So how do you imbibe yourself with the, the learning rather than the reading perspective? How do you manage? You have to prepare for an exam. It's already a reading fact. But at the same time, you know that it is better for you to learn, to focus on learning rather than um, <laughs> just reading. You know, in school, it, it, it was funny to me when I found out that what, how I was described was, and on serious book. You know, I talk, when I talked about the, the three modes of um, uh, three, I uh, mean, the four types of learners, I said the chaser, the bookworm, the type, type two, B, bookworm. So I was described as an on serious bookworm because it felt to others, eh, it felt like I was not reading or maybe I was not this. But my hope was that sometimes if I go to class, say uh, I'm, I'm saying i want to dedicate eight hours to read out of that eight hours eh, i've probably stood up from where i'm sitting 30 times moving around but it was because i i i was able to link the three modes of or modes of learning you get me so i understood that the psychomotor modes of learning is it, it means actionable so by moving around i found out if, say, for example, I'm writing an exam and I, I'm trying to remember something and I cannot, I'll just try to, the next thing I'll do is I'll try to think about what I was doing when I actually learned this particular thing. So do you see where the psychomotor kind of um, mode of learning comes in there? So the next thing I'm going to talk about is time management. Time management. How, how do you read or learn effectively? an exam instead of reading time management manage your time it goes without saying that <laughs> you're not going to be they do not give you unlimited time for that examination no at the same time when you are preparing for that examination you need to inculcate in yourself that time management skill set Time. What I used to do then was I, I, I would write the courses that I have to read, then set the days that I want to use to study those courses. And that is that I, I made sure that I followed, I disciplined myself to follow, to follow that thing that I've written down. So say today I want to talk about, I want to read engineering so, 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 so today. And next tomorrow I want to pick I made sure that I was able to achieve that. And sometimes, of course, there, there will be some deficiencies if I'm not able to achieve. I go back to what I've written, written and I have said that, okay, well, is this time that I've actually said, is this actually going to be enough? Manage your time. There is a right time for everything. When you're meant to study, don't watch a movie. When you're meant to be to be, to be sleeping don't read okay you're tired and um, you because you still have something to do of course you need to push yourself but when your body is tired and every everything in your system is shutting down please rest recognize that you have the time 
the, the, you, you, the, if the book is not going to run away. You're going to come back and meet it. But if you don't give your body what it really, really needs, you can break down. And that is why you find that students, some students really tend to, you know, break down during examination because they are not getting, they are not managing their time very well. Another aspect of it is, okay, you're, you're reading and let's say you're not getting anything and the next thing you want to do is, you're not tired though. You're not tired, though, but because you want to sleep, you're not going to force yourself to be on the bed. No, if you're not getting anything anymore, if, you're, if you feel like your brain is not taking it, take a walk. Not necessarily you have to sleep. Just take a walk. All right? So understand the mind of the exam. There is no way. If you're able to understand your, your lecturer, you, 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 each of them will have their own lecturer. So you understand that, okay, this man really likes this. Find out I'm not I'm not a I'm, I'm not a big supporter of people moving too close to their lecturers, but particularly I'm sure that my lecturers it's the only time they, they, they could place a face to my name was doing an introduction or something. But that did not mean that okay, what well, well, say something about this lecturer? You still be able to say something. So understand them. That is how you will be able to achieve. Um, true excellence, really. And the next thing is, because of time, I'm just rush through is um, develop a culture of networking. Look for people that challenge you. I've said that before. Avoid procrastination. Avoid procrastination, please. It is very, very important. Pay attention to the detail. Do your own work yourself. Do your own work yourself. Do your assignment, your projects. Please do your own work yourself. Have an holistic approach to learning. Be smart. Be smart. Focus on working smarter. There's a difference between working smart and working hard. Focus on working smarter. Focus on working smarter. A smart worker is specific, sets measurable goals that are achievable, they are realistic. Like the previous um, speaker said, and it's time bomb. What do you want to achieve? How do you want to achieve it? What are the things that you need to set in place to achieve that goal? What are the things you need to set in place to achieve that, that goal? Okay. Working hard is, is, is very, is very, is not, it's not easy, honestly. But you know that you're working towards a goal and that will help you to guide your actions it will direct your actions to achieving that goal so how do you maintain good grades like i said put in the painful hard work yes that's the painful hard work because working hard is not easy be confident in your ability is not ulti i find that one of the problems that i had with a lot of students they do not believe that they can do something I will not come to me that oh staff me how do I do this how do I do that my, my mind it's not like you don't know this thing you know it but you, because you, you, you kind of validated yourself you doubted yourself so much that I don't know you should have written yourself off so what I now do is take a step back okay those these notes uh, maybe you have thirty pages of notes so first take the first five page read it. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So take the first five pages. Then what I do? Please reduce your volume. Thank you very much. So I make her sit right beside me. I'll just say, okay, snap the, the boat. I make her drop on it. Snap the five first five pages that I said. Then sit down, bring those things that is on your phone, and tell me about what you're doing. And I found out that, okay, she's actually able to do everything, even more. So you, 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 don't, you don't believe that you can do something. It's not that you cannot do this. But because you don't believe that you can do it, so you 
automatically written yourself off. So how do you think that is going to help you to maintain a good food? Right? So have full confidence in yourself. And for avoid fixation on grades at all costs, please. At all costs, avoid fixation on your grades. Now, I said something from the beginning that I, I, I was not checking my results. So it was because of this main reason. You know, um, let me tell you something. When I was in school on grade level, I was a transfer student. Yeah. I transferred from a public Nigerian university to a private university. So when I transferred, the first result that I had then was the first class. Then because of some issues of health issues and all of that, um, of course, the second semester was very terrible. It was a very, very terrible semester for me. So my results dropped. And along the way, we found out that they made mistakes in my results as achievers is known for. But the, all the events of trying to get them to correct the mistakes and everything, till today, honestly, maybe they'll correct it tomorrow anyways. Till today, that was never corrected. So true, I, I noticed that I started getting fixated on, on the grades. I was, that was why I, I, I had to take a step back. I said, no, I'm not going to check my results again. And till my 500 level second semester, was the first time that I checked my results in, in three years. And why did I check it? It was when we were, we were preparing for clearance. So to avoid fixation on grades, what I did was I wrote down the grades I wanted to have for each semester in each course. And I allowed that to guide my actions. It guided the way I read. And when results came out, I did not check my results. Because I knew that it, there's no how. If you are focused, focus, be, be focused on what your mission, your, your vision, what you've written down. The grades, no, it's it not really matter to you because you, 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 you've not seen the results. You've not seen the results because you've already placed what you had to ask in your mind. And you are reading. And you must start thinking back to what you you got in that person like, hey, is it not going to be the same thing? Is it not going to be home? So to avoid that, I stop checking. If you don't say you don't check your results, please don't check your results. But if you feel that is what is going to help you. So what I did then was, I had one of my friends, whenever they check their results, I just asked them to check my results, just ensure that there is no missing script. Um, no, there was no missing script or missing results or anything like that. And that was all I needed to know. Okay, so set your priorities. So find a mentor. To maintain good grades, you need to have someone that you are accountable to. Have someone that you are accountable to. Keep yourself motivated. Keep yourself. Um, one thing that I was able to put together from the previous speakers is. I think all of us at some point, nobody started with, <laughs> nobody started with what, uh, well, nobody ended with what they started with. I think it's the right thing to say. Bro, Olamide stated that he started with shade three point something, and he was able to build, you can imagine the kind of um, effort that would have gone into that. I was someone that, um, if I was to go by every definition, uh, every description of what a first class student should be, it should probably not be me. And that is why you need God. Up to now, when I think about my activities on campus, this was someone that I was a church, I was a church person. <laughs> I, I, I was involved in church, an executive in church. I had some department committing that I had to do and I, I still had some entrepreneurship things that I was doing. I was an up up doing everything by by freelancer, all of that. And still I I knew I had to study for exams and everything. See it's it's to take God. It's to get take God to see you through all the other activities that you are doing. Eh? See the only difference I I, I would say to me, oh, the only difference I would say there is in people that that um, second class offer is an extra ingredient. And to, to me, that ingredient is God. Honestly, you cannot 
You cannot do anything without him. Um, affirmations, like I said, prayer, sustainability, know yourself, be calculative, see all these things. Like Bro Pressure said, I would hope that the slides will be available to everyone.